artificial intelligence is confusing. Artificial intelligence can be homicidal, and artificial intelligence can be racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, and anti-Semitic. But did you know that artificial intelligence could also be your best friend? The origin of the game-playing robot dates back to 1769, when a Hungarian inventor, Wolfgang von Kempelen, created the Sheshturk, or automaton chess player. When the machine was destroyed in a fire in 1894, it was revealed that the automaton was actually a box with the human inside. Effectively, it was people profiting off of others sitting down to watch a normal game of chess. But ever since then, the chess-playing and computer engineering population have been dedicated to the idea of bringing computerized chess to life. Its peak popularity was in the 1970s with computerized chess tournaments, and now it's become so commonplace we have to search just to buy a computer without a chess tape installed on it. Artificial intelligence came into the public sphere for real in 1972 when Pong was released. 1975 marked the advent of the home version, and although it was a little bit smaller now, the idea was still the same. It's you versus a computer, a computer that almost seems to think. Naturally, we've progressed from playing against the computer to playing alongside computers, spawning countless alternate life games. Some of these are MMO debuts, or most of multiplayer online world games like Second Life, The Elder Scrolls Online, and some of the installments of the Final Fantasy series, and some of them are one player only games where Every character other than you has a hive mind of their own. The most notable game of this variety is Sims, originally released in 2000. With games like The Sims, there's really no illusions. A single player gamer is as alone as it gets, or are you? I sat down with some of my friends who enjoy single player alternate life games to see if they actually ever noticed they were playing with AI, and if they did, well, mostly if they did. I like to play Sims. Like Sims 2, Sims 3, I've played Sims 4, so all of The Sims. And I'm also really into Skyrim. I've played similar, more so Skyrim. And uh, the Fallout series. Uh, have you ever noticed that there are some characters in the game that are not controlled by you? Yes. For me, uh, with I mostly I think about it in like The Sims. I literally have control over all of these people, but I can also interact with them as AI. The more recent games, I find it like I'm just finding interesting and interest in it as the AI in it is getting more intelligent and realistic compared to like older games. So that's good. It looks like everyone at least knows what AI is, but that's not entirely what I came here for. I mean, I see opening questions and everything, but that's not the point. So what is the point? So, uh, does the knowledge that you're playing with AI, uh, effectively people that aren't real, make you feel more or less alone? Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, hmm. I can, like... Edit that part out. I won't. Have you ever thought about it? Not really. Some are kind of annoying. Personally, I'm more of an introvert and I don't like being around actual people. So a lot of these games just like make me feel more comfortable. And sometimes, like when I was little, I would like use like the old sim games to like act out situations that I didn't want to do in real life. Like interacting with AI has never caused much of an effect on the outside world because once I put it down, it's, the, it's a game and I don't hold the interactions I'll have with AI to the same level as humans yet, but I know that the work can change in that. When you're not in control of your sim, like even if it's like one you can control, like if it's in your household, they do like annoying things that are pointless and then like let their health just like deteriorate and then you have to take care of them. Well, that just sounds like people. Yeah. Just real people. <laughs> It looks like nobody's really given it much thought, outside of hypotheticals about what AI can be programmed either accidentally or purposefully to do. And scientifically speaking, it would probably be more damaging to try and draw a conclusion from this than AI necessarily could be by itself. Just because people may never have sat down and thought about how alone they truly are does not mean that AI poses a specific threat, or that a complete takeover is imminent. And similarly, it would be unfair to say that if people had overwhelmingly answered that they did feel alone, that that would indicate that this type of advanced technology is inherently harmful. The point with AI is that it's programmable, it's designed to mirror certain aspects of our shared human experience, even sometimes to frightening degrees. But experience that entails is always up to us. If AI ever did become human enough to ever generate genuine connection, there would still always be a human behind that connection, albeit far away. In a way, AI could be viewed as another form of social media, we're consistently interacting with a time-captured idea that scientists had of something that would appeal to us. And considering the amount of video and computer games out there that feature artificially intelligent characters, that interest is there. Well, now seems like a great time to talk about the future for AI, both in and outside of the gaming sphere. And the truth is, I really have no idea. And I think a lot of other people have no idea too. I mean, the entire video up until this point has been discussing a pretty niche topic and I only came up with this section in particular because I never really know how to end things. Well, obviously artificial intelligence has had such a profound impact on the gaming industry, pop culture, and even our everyday lives that it's probably not going to be going away anytime soon. In fact, given our proclivity towards pocket pails like Siri and Cortana, the field is probably going to infinitely expand. To put a bit too fine a point on it, the field can't expand alone. Multiple people have to come forward with prototypes, ideas for games, codes, voice options, devices to implant the AI in, etc. And in a sense, that's a connection. Like anything, AI does and does not connect us both to real and fictional people. It just depends on how you interact with it.